Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com. I was asked out on YouTube if I had ever done a tutorial on how to make an owl, and I knew that I had one. I did a snowy owl, uh, a rather lengthy tutorial, I think it was five different posts, on how to make a snowy owl. It was one of the first things I believe that I made with my paper mache clay recipe, so I was pretty excited about it. It came out really nice. But I don't think I even owned a video camera yet, and so I never made a video for it, and so it never showed up on YouTube. So I wanted to make sure that none of my YouTubers miss it. That's So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna go ahead and use the still photos that I used for that tutorial and just show you how it was done. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the pattern that goes on the inside to make sure that the shapes are all correct and then I'll show you how to pad out that pattern to make the armature and then in the next videos we'll go ahead and finish it up with the paper mache clay actually give them a face and some feathers and make them very realistic it, it just really came out nice so let's go ahead and get started I'll show you how that was done <laughs> I like to always put a pattern on the inside of my animal sculpture. The first step of doing that is to find a really good reference photo and you can do that out on Google image search. Make a really simple sketch or cheat and just draw right around the edges of your, uh, of your photograph. Now of course all of your pieces are all jumbled up together. You can't just cut them all apart. So you'll need to separate those out. The way I do it is to draw a grid over my original drawing and then transfer each piece onto another gridded uh, piece of paper so that all of the pieces are separate. I also use the grid pattern in order to transfer uh, my pattern onto a piece of cardboard in the size I want it. Usually the original drawing is not big enough uh, for my finished sculpture and so I transfer it using bigger squares on my graph. You can completely avoid all graphing and transferring of, uh, of sketches if you happen to have one of those, I believe they're called artograph. It's a, a little projector that people use in order to transfer for sketches and to make them bigger and smaller. I don't have one so I do it the old-fashioned way with the grids and it works just fine. Some of the pieces have to be duplicated obviously. You'll need two legs and two wings and two feet. Uh, that is pretty obvious and once you have those out on your cardboard you just cut them out very carefully with a um, box cutter is the easiest way to do it. They're pretty dangerous. I've got uh, scars from <laughs> 30 years ago uh, from misusing a box cutter so do be careful. You probably noticed that my owl's head doesn't have a beak on it and the reason for that is that my snowy owl's head is pretty much a big round ball and I want him to turn his head because that's something that owls do a lot. The beak will be fairly easy to add once uh, we're actually getting into putting the armature together. So I just went ahead and used the pattern as simplified as I could leaving off the actual face. We'll put that on later. Now the next thing we need to do is start adding uh, some padding to the armature. I started out with the head and I'm just using crumpled paper and masking tape. Use as much as you need to in order to fill out the entire head and body so it's nice and fat and solid. You want you don't want a whole lot of uh, give to the to the actual form. Uh, then once the body is put together you can tape the legs on, uh, tape the feet onto the bottom of the legs Anytime you're doing a two-legged beast instead of four-legged, you're going to have some problems getting it to balance. Uh, so you're going to have to make adjustments as you go along. Just make sure that it's balanced right now so that it stands up straight like it's supposed to and you may need to be prepared to make some adjustments later. Feet obviously are going to go flat on the floor um, so I'm giving you a close-up there of how those are taped on. I padded the outside of the legs, a little bit of the inside where you can actually reach it down below at the very bottom uh, close to the feet, um, filled it out uh, as much as I could so that it looks nice and rounded and uh, natural. But I went ahead and taped the tail on there, then I taped on the wings, started padding them just like I did for the rest of the body and then the wing tips of course are going to be sticking out over the tail and they also overlap with each other. 
So make sure that you have those on there the way you want them before you have everything taped on. Sometimes you get a little carried away, use a whole bunch of masking tape, and then have to use your box cutter and take it all apart. Um, I left the uh, the the feet to last. I used some crumpled uh, aluminum foil to make the, uh, the the actual shapes of the knuckles and the claws on those feet. Taped them on really good with masking tape. And this is where you're going to end up with problems with him trying to fall over or tip back onto his tail because you've just changed the shape of your feet. So you'll need to do uh, you'll need to do just a little bit more tweaking uh, to make those feet stand up correctly. So that's the armature. You can go out and download the pattern that I used if you want to. I'm going to put the link to it right down below. Um, and in the next video, like I said, I'm going to show you how we actually add the paper mache clay to that armature. You could use paper strips and paste too if you want to, but it'd be a little bit harder to get those really nice feather details uh, like I did on my original owl. We have a new forum by the way, so if you have any questions or if you'd like to introduce yourself, show off some of your projects, that's going to be a perfect place to do it. I'll put a link to that down below too. Come on and visit us, ultimatepapermache.com.